Some parts of the car are all new, of course, the body and the interior. Uh, some parts of the car are evolutionary, like the driveline and the frame and the suspension, but there really isn't any part of this car we haven't touched and improved uh, things that we could improve and wanted to improve. And one of the key things we did is we relocated the rear tow link that used to be behind the rear axle and very stiff in order to have a good location of the uh, rear suspension due to lateral load. We actually relocated that link to forward of the rear axle center line and this allows us to have tuned compliance understeer in the car which helps stabilize the car under high lateral loads. So we've gone from a uh, you know 2000 vintage three-channel uh, continental ABS system to a very much modern Bosch um, from their performance group BEG stability control system which uh, is a four-channel ABS. We've got traction control, we've got stability control uh, required uh, by any vehicles sold uh, after 2012 and um, launch control on the vehicle. So don't dismay about having stability control on a Viper. You can trust me for now until you can drive one yourself, but uh, you won't be disappointed with the stability control. It's never in the way. It's never the fun police. It's never a nanny. All it's going to do is save your ass when you're really in trouble. And uh, you can drive this car in full-on mode at the racetrack, and the stability control is not going to get in your way unless really you're driving not smoothly or you're in trouble. So the four modes are full on it key up, which is there every time it key up by regulation. Uh, so we have to have it in, in full on. But full on is definitely a fully track capable mode. Some people will never take it, need to take it out of that mode. And trust me, you know, I've had Ralph in the car in full on at the racetrack. And, you know, we don't need, it doesn't need to be turned off. Uh, mode two called sport is reduced uh, amount of stability control intervention, but it's still there to uh, straighten you out if you're really in trouble. And uh, there's some traction control. It's really track mode traction control, but it's going to allow more wheel slip. And it's going to allow you to steer the car somewhat with the throttle more than it is in full on. And then track mode is stability control, reduced stability control only. And the fourth mode is full off. And then launch control is a fifth mode that's available in any one of those four. Launch control, uh, the button to actuate it is on the steering wheel, and in launch control, once you put it in that mode, the cluster will let you know you're in that mode. You push the clutch in, stick it in first gear, plant the throttle to the floor quickly, and the RPM will swing up to the set point that we want it to launch at, and uh, let the clutch go. And it'll, throt it'll throttle control and do controlled wheel slip for maximum grip uh, all the way through first gear until the car hooks up. And uh, it's meant to be used on, you know, optimum surfaces as well as some suboptimum surfaces. The thing about um, the Gen 5 is now we have the X-Brace under the hood. It's something that came directly out of racing Vipers, um, Comp Coupes, and um, the FIA series. The, uh, the, the Comp Coupe and the GTSR had X-Braces under the hood closely, and that's for a reason. But in the end, it's about improved handling and improved lap times on the car.